these two huge rocks thrown into the NFL draft pond by three NFL teams, San Francisco, Miami, and Philadelphia, have so many ripple effects. And I, I, I had to just boil it down to the top five headlines to come out of two draft trades. And um, I've got them. Mike, I don't know if we've talked about it, but I, I, I just feel like I do need NFL Films music. I got you, Rich. I appreciate that. Here you go. We'll go from five all the way up to number one. Here's number five, that it seems to me that the Miami Dolphins are all in on Tua now. Because the conversation, as you know, that I thought was a little bit nutty from the end of the regular season, or at least the last month of the regular season, all the way up to this draft trade was, you know, well, Dolphins got beat in last year's draft by taking Tua over Justin Herbert, and Tua is expendable, certainly if it's for Deshaun Watson, and the Dolphins aren't really in on Tua completely. But to me, when you move out of the sixth spot, or we move out of the three spot, you're basically saying, we are not interested in one of the top four quarterbacks in this draft. We're moving down to six, where we'll probably have no shot at any of the top four quarterbacks in this draft. And as a matter of fact, when we move from 12 back up to six, that means we are very interested in getting a top flight offensive player either at wide receiver or tight end or at the uh, offensive line spot for Tua. And then the Dolphins, my gosh, I have it right here in front of me. Chris Greer um, now with, he's the general manager of the Miami Dolphins. From 2020 to 2023, he is projected to pick nine times in the first round. <laughs> nine first round picks over a four year span. And the pick that the Dolphins uh, sent to San Francisco is not even their own in this year's draft. That belongs to uh, the Houston Texans originally that was sent to Miami for the tackle Laramie Tunsil, who the Dolphins have turned into a mini Herschel Walker trade. Four firsts, two seconds, and a third from that Laramie Tunsil trade alone, which is what Chris Greer, the general manager, is doing. And if he does, in fact draft using these picks and surround Tua, who's, you know, part of this whole first round of Palooza, if they do draft a championship team, they can turn this Tunsil trade into a, a Herschel Walker trade of their own. But we'll see. To me, it's just like the whole conversation of Tua's gone or they're not really into Tua. Well, Ryan Fitzpatrick's gone. Tua's still there. And they move back up to six to no doubt choose somebody. You know, Jamar Chase, I don't think will be there. I think they, they think that the kid from LSU is going to be drafted by Cincinnati right before him, and they'll have a reunion between two LSU Tigers. Joe Burrow coming back from his rock and roll from his knee injury, and let's go run it back, if you will. But they're going to get a high quality offensive player for Tua. That's my first take on that. That's number five on the list. Number four is Jalen Hurts. You got one year to prove yourself. That's basically it. Jalen Hurts, you got one year to prove yourself. There's a lot of folks in Philadelphia that are upset that they moved from 6 down to 12, that they could have gotten, what, that kid Pitts, the, the tight yeah, end? Tight end, Florida. Kyle that, that, that he could be the perfect guy for him, and they're moving out of 12. They're moving from 6 down to 12, and they're not really supporting Jalen Hurts this year. You could make that case. 12, they, they didn't move out of the first round entirely, right? And they're, they're not going to use 12 on a, another quarterback like, say, the Packers did last year. They're going to get somebody who can help Jalen Hurts this year. But the, what the Philadelphia Eagles did was get a second first-round pick for next year. And by the way, flipping Carson Wentz to Indianapolis, that if everything goes according to plan for Wentz and the Colts, that would turn into a first-round pick for next year's right. draft. They would have three first-round picks. So if they like a quarterback in next year's draft, they could move wherever the hell they want to go get him. But it's basically your job this year, Jalen Hurts, certainly when you're getting Joe Flacco to back him up. Teach him how to be a professional if he really even needs that. <laughs> well, I would think being in Alabama would kind of teach you how to do that with Nick Saban <laughs> as your coach. But I'm not buying the fact that they're not helping Hurts by moving from 6 down to 12. What they really did in the very end is maneuver wisely for their draft next year when their cap will be completely uh, 
on the up and up. Wentz is off, and the cap is back in to the levels that they're used to. They're setting up for the future. Hertz could be the guy. We'll see how that goes. But he's basically got one year, and none of it would have been possible if they kept Jalen Hurts in the fourth quarter of game 256. All the Eagles fans and us in the NFL saying, what are you doing, Doug Peterson, tapping out on a, you know, on a game that we're all wondering whether it can work out for the Eagles or Washington and the Giants need you and you're tapping out on competition? Well, guess what? Right They're right. drafting 12th overall and they may have three first-round picks next year. Number three. Number three, Jimmy G, we hardly knew you. Now, <laughs> the Niners are saying he's still their guy this year because they, they can win it there right now. They can win it right now. And he may wind up on the roster this year that the cap, the way that they have it set up, they can carry Jimmy G and whoever they're choosing third overall because they are choosing a quarterback third overall. You are not coughing up all of that draft capital to go get a kid who can play tackle. You're not drafting all that capital to go get a kid who can catch the ball from Jimmy G. You are catch you are getting somebody who you think is your quarterback and championship quarterback of the future and you are restarting the clock with this kid right now. And you are restarting the clock on your cap right now. And you are needing to pay Nick Bosa and other people down the road. You need to have some cap help maybe from the position that gives you the most cap help by drafting a rookie quarterback and Kyle Shanahan gets his guy not from somebody else his guy and you go to work that's why I think Jimmy Garoppolo is history you know obviously after this coming year but maybe even time for this year and even if he is the guy right now he stumbles out of the gate one and three you're gonna see that kid out there I'll tell you that so Jimmy G the clock's ticking and I would be surprised if he's on the team this year to be very honest with you They might be saying right now, hey, Jimmy's our guy because we need you to come at us with an offer we can't refuse and see you later. And Kyle's like, I can coach this kid up. Although the problem is, and you'll hear from Daniel Jeremiah top of the second hour, whoever they're going to get third overall, unless it's Mac Jones, doesn't have a lot of college experience, which is maybe why they want to keep Jimmy G around for at least this year. Number two, and this is, uh, you know, and this has nothing to do, you know, obviously it may have something to do but I don't think this has anything to do with everything going on with Deshaun Watson and all the lawsuits that are being filed right now in a civil lawsuit that just keeps on mounting and mounting against him in the city of Houston. But I don't think Deshaun Watson's going anywhere because the what, what the Niners just gave to the Dolphins in order to choose a player who has not played a single snap in the NFL is exactly the cost of Deshaun Watson and a little bit maybe less than that. But the run, you know, you're going to have to offer somebody a first round pick in three consecutive drafts, this and two, and then toss in a third and then maybe another player or two. That's the package for Deshaun Watson. And the Niners are one of those teams that were willing to do it. You don't think they knocked on Houston's door at some point? They might have pulled the plug with all of these lawsuits out there. Right. I don't know. Right. But this is the – and so this is now one team that would have been perfect for Deshaun and perfect for the Texans because he's out of your conference. That's now off the board. Now off the board. And the Dolphins are now off the board. And even the Eagles. The Eagles might be able to maybe throw all of these first-rounders to just, you know, them for Deshaun Watson. Maybe that could happen. I don't know. Denver's being thrown out there for Deshaun Watson. Carolina's being thrown out there for Deshaun Watson. This is now the floor. And you have to think the Niners at some point knocked on the door of Houston for this. And then you also have to think that the Niners knocked on the door to the Jets for this. And if the Jets said no to this, they're not flipping it for Deshaun Watson. Put that all together with the lawsuits, and I don't think Deshaun Watson's going anywhere right now. Which leads me to number one. Broadway Zach, baby. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) That's the headline of the Daily News. Broadway Zach after Zach Wilson, in the middle of all of this trade drama, had his pro day live on NFL Network. Daniel Jeremiah was, if you will, part of the broadcast team for that. Another reason why he's joining us at the top of the next hour. Broadway Zach, 